Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 7.4, communication. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand and implement into your own organisation or industry. Okay, let's get started. Let's take a look at what clause 7.4 wants us to do. This clause is broken down into three sub clauses. The first sub clause is 741 general, and it states that the organization shall establish, implement, and maintain the processes needed for internal and external communications relevant to the OHNS management system, including determining a, on what it will communicate, B, when to communicate, C, with whom to communicate, which specifically includes one, internally among the various levels and functions of the organization, two, among contractors and visitors to the workplace, three, among other interested parties, and finally, D, how to communicate. So here's a little tip for you. You can follow clause 4.2, which is understanding the needs and expectations of interested parties. This clause will give you a head start on what to communicate, when and with whom. For instance, you might have a regulatory body that needs quarterly updates, that's the when as well as interested parties, on your OHS compliance, that's the what. You'll be sending this to a designated person within that organization. That's the with whom. You'll have to decide how you will communicate this, perhaps through an online portal or a formal report, and who within your organization will be responsible for this communication. And don't forget that interested parties are also your contractors, visitors, and internally your workers, so this is all wrapped up in what you identify in clause 4.2. Clause 741 then goes on to say that the organization shall take into account diversity aspects, example, gender, language, culture, literacy, disability, when considering its communication needs, and that the organization shall ensure that the views of external interested parties are considered in establishing its communication processes. This means that this clause is not just about communication, it's about including everyone. When you think about how to communicate in your business, you need to consider all of the differences in the workplace, which could be people of different genders, different languages, various cultural backgrounds, different education levels, and some may even have disabilities. This clause says that we need to consider this so everyone gets the message loud and clear in a way they understand. This clause also tells us to listen to people outside of the business who might be affected by what you do. This can be anyone from your customers to local community leaders. When you are setting up ways to communicate in the workplace, remember to include everyone's voice inside and outside the company. This way, everyone is on the same page and OHS stays front and center. There is still a little more to go in this subclause 741, where it states that when establishing its communication processes, the organization shall take into account its legal requirements and other requirements, ensure that OHS information to be communicated is consistent with information generated within the OHS management systems and is reliable. And then it states that the organization shall respond to relevant communications on its OHS management system. ISO 45001 places a strong emphasis on documenting your communication procedures, especially if they relate to legal requirements or compliance obligations. This is emphasized by the final sentence in this subclause, 
which says that the organization shall retain documented information as evidence of its communications as appropriate. This means that you have to think about the legal and other requirements related to OH&S. It's like making sure that you are not just playing by the rules, but also keeping everyone safe according to those rules. Next, the information shared about workplace health and safety must be consistent and reliable, which means that what is being communicated should match up with the actual safety practices and policies that are in place. The business also needs to respond to any questions or feedback about its OH&S management system. So if someone reaches out with a concern or question, you need to respond to them. Then last but not least, ISO 45001 really emphasizes that you should be keeping records of your OH&S related communications. This is all about proving that you are doing what you say you are doing when it comes to communication. Now, let's move on to subclause 742, internal communication. This subclause states, the organization shall A, internally communicate information relevant to the OH&S management system among the various levels and functions of the organization, including changes to the OH&S management system as appropriate. B, ensure its communication processes enables workers to contribute to continual improvement. This part of the clause wants you to make sure that OH&S information is communicated within your organization. Basically, you've got to share what's going on with regards to OH&S with your team, from top level management down to the shop floor. It's a two way street. So remember, feedback from employees is just as important as sending messages down the chain of command. This is essential as open and effective communication ensures that everyone is on the same page when it comes to OH&S objectives, policies, and performance. This could be done through team meetings, newsletters, or even a dedicated internal website, whatever is relevant to your way of communication internally. And finally, let's touch on clause 743, external communication. This subclause states that the organization shall externally communicate information relevant to the OH&S management system as established by the organization's communication processes and taking into account its legal requirements and other requirements. This clause asks you to figure out your strategy for communicating with external parties. That could be anyone from regulators, suppliers, customers, or the general public. Let's break it down. If you're dealing with suppliers, maybe you want to communicate your OH&S plan and ask how they can align with that plan. If it's a regulatory body, you might be sending over compliance data or incident reports. The point is you decide what makes sense for your organization based on what you identify as the needs and expectations of those interested parties. But make sure you've got a record of it. So there we go. We've covered the full spectrum of communication under ISO 45001 Clause 7.4. With a bit of planning and documentation, you can ensure that you're communicating effectively, both internally and externally, all while keeping your OH&S management system performing and meeting objectives. Thanks so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Auditor Training Online is your one-stop shop for professional training. If you're interested in mastering even more of this standard, head over to our website and enroll in one of our courses. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and drop a comment or question below. Your career transformation starts with a single click, so join me in making the world a better place.